So when I finished um, my third lift on, on this year's Invictus Games in the competition, I came off the platform and a news presenter said to me, so where do you think you've come? So before I tell you where I came, if you don't already know, I'm going to tell you, ring you right the way back to where I came from originally. Um, I've not changed much, have I? Quite cute. Um, thank you. So back in um, my childhood, sadly, wasn't the greatest. Um, we went through some very turbulent times. There was a lot of um, shouting. There was um, a little bit of violence. And sadly, throughout um, my time growing up, I experienced um, child sexual abuse from a family friend. And that went on for about um, two or three years. And I never really socialized, so I wasn't around people, didn't know how to interact with people. All I'd known was being at home in, in that environment. So um, at 15, I managed to um, leave home leave the situation I was in, because um, I'd just finished school at that point. Um, although I did pass my exams, um, I'd literally, sadly, I hadn't revised, because I hadn't had the space or the time or the safe place to revise. So I passed nine GCSEs, only one grade C, but the fact that I passed them all, considering I didn't revise, I was quite pleased with that. Um, but I thought, well, what do I do with my life now? Because... I don't know who I am, I don't know what I'm about, I don't know what I like to do, what, you know, what I don't like to do. Uh, I couldn't really go anywhere with the exam results that I had. But I remember back in, when I was 13, we had a um, careers fair that people have at schools, and the RAF were there. And I always said I'd love to join, but I didn't think I was good enough and I didn't think I was clever enough. So I got a job in, which my head teacher got me, in a fish and tackle shop, touching maggots and lug worms and things like that. I don't know, minging. Um, but sadly, and, and they really, really smell. If anybody's been near maggots and think, oh, they're horrendous. But that was my first job, and I spent a year or so doing that. And then, because I was into drawing, etc., I then went to um, a furniture shop to draw furniture patterns, which doesn't sound great, but to me it was better than touching those things. So um, I did that. And then somebody said to me, well, why don't you join the RAF? And I said, I'm really not clever enough. They said, yeah, but for some of the things, you don't need qualifications. So I went to the recruitment office, and they basically said, you don't need qualifications to be a medic result. So I joined. I um, left home. Um, sadly, all my belongings were there, and I really don't know what's happened to them since. So I basically joined the RAF with nothing, um, apart from my good self. So I turned up very naive, didn't know how to communicate with people, hadn't had any friends really. So I was suddenly in this environment where you're sharing a room with 23 other people and you're having to try and work together and communicate and they're having a laugh and things like that. And I'm feeling very uncomfortable because I don't know how to interact with these guys. But I slowly start to learn and throughout training, I realized that I had strengths where other people were struggling. So because of the discipline, I had no problems with that side because I'd kind of come from that environment. All the inspections, having to have everything neat and tidy, again, I had no problems because when you've had to cut your back lawn with scissors, you learn how to make everything perfect. So again, for me, that was no problem at all. And I started to excel, and I was doing really, really well, and I thought, do you know what? I'm actually a person in my own right now, and people are actually starting to like me, and I'm doing quite well in what I'm doing. And then the opportunity came up to train as a paramedic, and I thought, shall I, shan't I? I'm a clever enough, but I went for it anyway. And um, I'm glad to say, oh, look. <laughs> so I joined, this was me. I don't have them glasses anymore, thankfully. <laughs> All right. This was me having passed my paramedic training, um, and I was very proud to graduate with the rest of the guys, and I thought... This is it. It's fantastic. Um, I went on a tour then with the RAF regiment. And you know they've just put in the news now that women can join the RAF regiment and serve with them. Yeah, I did that in 2009. <laughs> it's no news to some of us. So I was the first female to go out and deploy to Afghanistan with the RAF regiment. 
Um, the reserves had done it many years ago, but I was the first one to trial it, and it worked really well. And that was the making of me, because I realised how strong I could be, how fit I was physically, and actually how strong I was getting mentally as well. So I was kind of starting to build my own little bridge to actually reach other people, because I'd not been able to do that before. So this bridge is building slowly, but you can't do that on your own. You have to let people in sometimes, which, which is what I knew I had to do to then move forward. After that tour, my boss said to me, why don't you commission? Become an officer in the RAF. Well, I thought, well, I'm not good enough for that. And these doubting nag niggles in my mind saying, you've got no qualifications, you're not good enough, you'll never do it and you'll never make it. But I went through the training and I worked hard. Uh, but all the way through my military career, my failure, or they're not failures, because I don't class anything as failures, I struggled with academics and sport. But I commissioned. I got through it. And through the grit of my teeth, and I, I really was struggling at times, I got through it. I passed the theory exams just on the bare minimum mark that we needed. But I passed them. And I was so happy. But then things started to change, and I ended up having to be a paramedic going to Afghanistan, working on the front line. So my next tour then was in the back of a helicopter, picking up bodies, mangled bodies, picking up men and women who have served in the forces, but also picking up women and children um, from the Afghans as well. And when, you know, all you're seeing is these people, and the last thing that you see is staring into somebody's dark eyes as their life leaves you of another life that we couldn't save. I then started um, to struggle a little bit. I was diagnosed with PTSD, and I had to leave the service. Um, everything basically hit rock bottom, and I, my bridge was crumbling again, and I was looking down. You know, If I was on the edge of that bridge now that it crumbled, I wanted to drop off that bridge, and I planned to take my own life. I was lower than you could possibly go. And the only thing that stopped me from taking my own life was my granddad at the time, and it would have broke his heart. And if I hadn't have had in my heart, I always do things for everybody else. I'd rather do things for others than put myself first. And I'm so pleased at that point I didn't put myself first. Otherwise, I wouldn't be stood here now. So I had to leave the service, um, which I did 23 years of. And I basically, I was grieving for it for a long time after I'd suddenly started to become well again. It was hard because this is something that I'd achieved. This is, this is something that made me as a person... I found myself in the military, and that was my family. To then have to realise that you've come out because the military, your dream career has then turned into your nightmare, is a bit of a struggle. And I couldn't cope with it. But do you know what? The people that I just mentioned that can come and help you, I offered in, I put my hand up, because it makes a better leader to say, actually, I'm struggling than it does to just jump off the edge, because people will follow you and jump off the edge. So put your hand up and say, look, I'm struggling, because you'll find out you're not on your own and other people were struggling as well. So, you know, get them in, help them to build that bridge for you. You don't have to do everything on your own. It's all about teamwork and building stuff. So I did that. And, you know, it doesn't matter where you've come in life. I didn't think I could achieve anything. But I'd got my paramedic training. That takes a lot of work. I got my commission. That takes a lot of work. You can come from nothing, and you can come from the worst nightmare and get on. So I mentioned that I'm not very good at sport and never have been all my life, and I was always one that came last and the last to be picked. And then Invictus said, do you want to have a go? So I said, well, I've got nothing to lose. So I had a go, and I competed in powerlifting and in rowing. I thought, I'll choose rowing because it's a sit-down job, isn't it? <laughs> it was really hard, seriously hard, and the powerlifting... But you know what? I came middle of the road in rowing. I didn't come last for the first time ever in a sporting activity, and I came fifth in the powerlifting. But the guy said to me, he said, um, so where do you think you came? And I said, do you know what? I don't actually care where I come. Yeah, I don't care. I hit a PB in every sport, and I did it. And if I can do it, anybody can do it. So believe in yourself.